Vivaldi Web Browser is quickly becoming one of my favorite browsers with its many features that differentiate itself from its competitors. Vivaldi was founded by the co-founder and former CEO of Opera Software, which makes the Opera Browser. It's currently available on Windows, Linux, and Mac. An iOS and Android app is in development. A few of you have requested that I do a tutorial on Vivaldi showcasing its many features. For the three to five of you out there, this video is for you. That's coming up next on Tech Gumbo. If you haven't done so already, you can download Vivaldi at vivaldi.com. I'll put a link in the description of this video. For this video, I'll also be doing a clean install of the browser on a Windows 10 PC to walk you through the process. On a Mac, and depending on your distro of Linux, your steps may vary. Now click on the download button and save it to your preferred location. Once Vivaldi is downloaded, install it from your preferred location. Click on Accept and Install. Once you have it completely installed, open up the Vivaldi browser. You'll have this welcome screen. At any time you feel that I'm going too fast, it might be a good idea to pause this video. So first off, it's going to ask you to select an appearance. You have several options here. I'm going to stay with the light. Now it's going to ask you your preferred tab bar position. I'm going to leave it here at the top. Now it's going to ask you for a background picture for your start page. I'm going to go with this jellyfish down here. Now let's move to the next page. Now click on start browsing right there in the middle. Now you should see the default start page for Vivaldi. You have three options up here, speed dial, which is all of these websites here, bookmarks and history. Let's take a look at speed dial here. You've probably seen something like this in other browsers. In Vivaldi, it's a little bit different. Of course, it has some preloaded websites here for you. On these tabs, you can get rid of them by clicking the X in the upper right hand corner of each one. So I'll get rid of a few here. What makes this page different from other browsers is that you can actually customize it. So here on this plus sign, if you want to add a site to the start page, click on the plus. In the lower left hand corner, just put in the name of a website. So I'll do YouTube here and click on add. And it's loading up YouTube right here. So if you want a quick shortcut to YouTube, There you go. You can use that same method for just about any other website on the internet. If you want to add a new speed dial folder to keep everything categorized, you can click on this plus sign here up in the tab area. So if you want to rename it, you can rename it to anything else that you'd want. So I'll name this one news. Then you hit enter. And in this tab, you can have just all news websites. Here you have bookmarks. That's pretty self-explanatory. Vivaldi comes with preloaded bookmarks for you. You can get rid of whatever you want. And then history. Since this is a clean install, the only history we have is YouTube that we did earlier. And let's go back to speed dial. Let's take a look at the menu options. In Vivaldi, to access the menu, it's a little bit different than other web browsers. You have to go up to the upper left-hand corner and click on the V. Then you have your normal options like File, Edit, View, Tools, Window, and Help. I'll go over a few of the options in the menu. Under the File heading, this is where you'd want to import your bookmarks and settings. Then you just select the browser where you want to import those bookmarks and settings. We're not going to do that one right now. Let's go back to the menu. In view, if you want to add a bookmarks bar, or if you want to add some more side panels, you can do that right here. I actually prefer to have a bookmarks bar on my browsers, so 
I'm gonna click that one right there. Now I have a bookmarks bar. Let's go back to the menu here. And in the tools area, this is where you're gonna access your settings. So click on settings. Under startup, this is where you can add Vivaldi as your default browser. You can also change the start page when Vivaldi opens up. Appearance. Themes. If you don't like the theme that you picked when you started up Vivaldi, you can change it right here. Same with the pictures. Change the tab positions. I prefer the side panels to be on the left side of the browser. If you want to change that to the right, you can do that right here. Address bar positioning. Bookmarks. You have the option down here to have your bookmarks as text and icon, but you can change them to text only or icon only. In search, you can change the default search engine. Currently it is Bing. I'm going to change it to Google. It's probably best to make sure that enable auto update is checked. Let's go back to the themes area here. One thing I forgot to mention. Vivaldi has added Philips Hue theme integration. With this latest update, you can now link your smart bulbs under the theme settings page. If any of you have a Philips Hue lighting system and actually have this enabled, let me know how that's worked out for you. So as you can see, Vivaldi has a lot of settings that you can mess around with to customize it to your preferences. So let's get out of the settings menu here. So just click on the X in the upper right hand corner here. Now let's take a look at the side panel here on the left. This is an easy way to quickly access bookmarks, previous downloads. You can take notes here if you want to. And you can also add a web panel. So a particular website that you visit frequently. This would come in handy if you don't like a bookmarks bar, otherwise it's kind of redundant. Let's do amazon.com. Then click on plus. Now Amazon's gonna load up here in the sidebar. To extend it out, move right to the edge where you see the bi-directional arrows. You can left click on your mouse and drag it out as far as you would like. Now you can have two websites in split screen within the browser. This can come in handy if you need to refer back to another website for some particular reason. To get rid of Amazon, just click on the web panel icon right here. Now the other site you have loaded is now back to full screen. You can add as many web panels as you would like. Vivaldi has a couple interesting features called tab stacking and tab tiling. I'll first show you the tab stacking. If you have multiple sites open and you want to group those sites, let's take here the new Boston and let's stack it with YouTube. You want to hover it over YouTube where you see it get dark there in the left and then just drop it right on top. Now YouTube and the new Boston site are both in a stack together. If you right click in the tab for the new stack, you'll see the option to move the tab stack to a new window, remove from tab stack, or if you want to undo what you just did and ungroup the tab stack, click on ungroup tab stack. Now for tab tiling, this feature is really cool. First you have to put your websites into a stack like we did earlier. So let's move the new Boston to YouTube. Hover your mouse over the tab, right click, then select Tile Tab Stack. Now you have a split screen there with the two sites. If you want to add another site to the stack, just select a site. We'll do Google right here. Add it to it. Now you have three panels side by side. To undo the tiling, right click over that tab where you have the stack, 
then select Untile Tab Stack. Taking screenshots in Vivaldi could not be any easier. Here's how you do it. Down in the status bar, you'll see a little camera icon. Click on that. It gives you the option to select the full page as either a PNG or JPEG, or you can copy it to your clipboard, or you could select a certain area of the page with the same options. The full page one is pretty self-explanatory. Takes a screenshot of the entire page. For the selection area, select area. We'll do copy to clipboard. Now I'll select an area. Then just click and drag the area in which you want to take a screenshot. And then let go when you're done. Now the image is automatically stored on your clipboard. In the side panel, you can also take a screenshot. But the only option you have in the side panel is for the entire page. So the entire page of YouTube here. So go into your notes in the side panel, click on plus, create your note. Click on the camera icon. And now you'll see it's taken a screenshot of the entire page. Some of you may have seen my video on adding Chrome extensions to Vivaldi. If you're watching this video, there's no need to watch that other one now. Since Vivaldi is built on top of Chromium, which is open source, you can add extensions to Vivaldi directly from the Chrome Web Store. I've installed several extensions in Vivaldi on my laptop and have not had any issues. To download extensions, you can go to the Chrome Web Store in your browser, or you can go back to the menus icon we showed you earlier, click on it, go down to tools, select extensions. This page will show you the extensions that are installed on your browser. To get more extensions, click on get more extensions. And this takes you directly to the Chrome Web Store. You'll see some of the more popular extensions listed here on the page. If you have extensions that are of interest to you, you can search the store. I'll do a search here for Invisible Hand. To download the extension, select Add to Chrome. When you're ready to install, select Add Extension, and then just follow the on-screen prompts. To finish off, we're going to go back to the Start page for Vivaldi. Recently, they updated the History tab here. So if you click on History, it now shows you your history in a more interesting way. It's currently defaulted to day, but if you take a look at week, it'll show you the sites you visited this week. And for the month, it gives you a monthly layout for sites you visited on each day of the month. Shows you little interesting charts here in the right hand side for your browsing activity, link transition type, whether you directly went to the site or you were linked to the site and the top sites you visited along with how many times you visited that site. So that's kind of interesting. That concludes the Vivaldi tutorial. For the three of you that watched this video, thanks for watching. Vivaldi sure does have some interesting features to distinguish itself from other popular browsers such as Chrome and Firefox, and it's definitely more interesting than Safari. If this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Let me know in the comments what you think of the Vivaldi browser. For more tutorials and other tech-related stuff, you're in the right place here on Tech Gumbo.